Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today we're gonna cover my favorite topic, differences between British and American English. Whenever we start talking about this topic, you ask me, Marina, which version of English should I learn? And my answer is always, it's up to you. They're all amazing. There's also Australian English. If you look at UK English, there are so many different regional accents. In the ideal world, I would love to understand and speak them all, which is kind of not possible because there are so many, but it really depends on what your goals are. So for example, if you want to take TOEFL, TOEFL is considered an American test and the majority of tasks in TOEFL would be in American English, but they would not penalize you if you start using British accent. As long as you're consistent, as long as you use British version of English in every single exercise that you're taking, then you should be fine. On the other side, there is a very popular IELTS exam and this one is considered British. And if you're trying to enter a British university, I would recommend taking IELTS. And IELTS is mostly based on British English. So again, really up to you, you won't be penalized, but it would make your life a little easier if you decide to start learning American accent, for example, and you see yourself working in America in two or three years. You need to think about where you see yourself in three or five years and then stick to a version of English that you've selected. Today, we're gonna talk about major differences and I think this video would really help you determine what kind of English you wanna learn. But before we start, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you like learning English and if you like the way I speak English. So first of all, there are loads of words and I'm pretty sure you know a lot of them, but I just want to make sure you remember that some words mean the same in Britain and America, but they are completely different words. For example, in America, we live in an apartment. Apartment 32. In Britain, we live in a flat. A Joe Harrison's flat. In America, if you want to ask someone, where did you go to college? You actually mean where did they go to university? Because Stanford, for example, Stanford University. Harvard is Harvard University. But still, when you're asking about a university, you would ask, where did you go to college? The answer would be, I went to Harvard, meaning Harvard University but you still use the word college. I know it's a little weird, but this is the way it is. In the UK, you would ask about the university. University, not college. What about college? What about college? From the university. Of in America, you go on a vacation. In the UK, you go on a holiday. And it's actually holiday. It's off, not ha, holiday. Again, I am not a native speaker, but I've lived in the US for five years. So I think my accent is kind of more California. In America, we have our mailbox. In Great Britain, it's postbox. In America, we eat cookies. In Great Britain, biscuits. Cookie? Biscuit? Yeah. In America, we go watch a movie. In Great Britain, we go to watch a film. But by the way, if you use any of those words in those countries, people would still understand what you mean by movie in Great Britain. Well, in America, you might mix things up a little by saying film because in the US we say film for the actual thing that was used to produce movies dozens of years ago that was called film. Quick ad break. If you are looking for more ways to master your English, Lingoda has come up with new very interesting challenge and I like how creative they get with their challenges. This time they've created a Lingoda team challenge. That means you are going through this challenge not alone, but with a team of your friends. You can choose from two options. You can take three classes per week for seven weeks, that means 21 classes, or you can do super challenge, five classes a week, seven weeks, 35 classes in total. You can take this challenge to improve your English, and that would mean that you will take online small group classes, 60 minutes each, but you can also take this challenge in German, French, and Spanish. You can join this challenge as an individual, but I highly recommend forming your own group of friends. For example, if you have friends that are also willing to learn English with you, you can join all together and challenge each other and compete with each other. That makes this challenge even more interesting. No matter if you register as an individual or a team, if you take 100% of the classes, Lingoda will donate 20% of the classes you've taken to those who are in need through their scholarship program. 10 best-ranked teams get prizes. Uh, one of the teams would get a trip 
to one of European four capitals, and other teams will be able to get 200 free classes on Lingoda. And by the way, for every team member that you recruit, you get 10 euros cash back. Your team can be from 2 to 12 people, you can learn different languages at different levels. One thing that has to be in common for your team is the amount of classes that you take per week. And you all can live in different cities and different countries. When you buy the product, you will get all the instructions to your email. Don't forget to add your name to get 10 euros cash back for every team member that you bring. All team members must sign up by November 1st and complete their challenge within 63 days by December 1st. And again, if you choose to take this challenge, you're going to be taught by qualified native speakers. The classes are available 24 seven. And because the online classes are really small on average, they have like three people per class you will be able to get individual feedback. So if you're serious about learning English, commit to a course, build a routine of attending classes regularly and bring your English to the next level. The link will be down below. Don't forget to add my key name, Lingua Marina, to start building your teams. Commit to this challenge, improve your language, and let me know down in comments below if you've taken the challenges from Lingoda before and how they went, because I really like what this company is doing on the language market, and I really hope they would help you improve your language skills. The next difference is using present perfect in British and American English. If you've taken my classes on tenses, you know that I've eaten means I'm not hungry. And this is a very British thing to say. So for example, in Great Britain, we would say I've eaten, meaning I am not hungry. In America, we would just use present simple. And uh, generally speaking, Americans just like to simplify things and British people are more traditional. So in America, I would say I already had lunch. I'm not hungry. I am using past simple here versus present perfect that I would use if I try to sound more British. Oh, the next one is my favorite because I have a very close friend in Great Britain and she would always, always, always use that question. She looks so beautiful, doesn't she? He is amazing, isn't he? And for her, this is super natural. For me, this is a little weird because in America, people don't really use tech questions. For me, again, it's not even weird. It's really beautiful because I feel like I'm in a movie or at a very formal party and everyone's like, oh, this tastes amazing, doesn't it? This is very British to use tech questions. Whenever a person is using a tech question, I'm like, yay, British. You are mad, aren't you? The next thing, got versus gotten. You know this third form of the verb. In America, we sometimes say gotten. This is something that stuck in American language. In Britain, you would say he's gotten more serious about his profession. In America, because we still have this gotten, we would say he's gotten more serious about his profession. He's gotten through ripper sprees before. Yeah. Has he got the painting yet? But there is one thing you need to note. In both American and British, we would use only got when we're talking about things that we're possessing. I've got this bag, I've got your message. So here we can only say got. But when you are kind of transforming yourself, I've gotten more serious about YouTube, I've gotten more serious about my English. This is a very American way to say it. You're using gotten instead of got, because got is more British. The next thing, collective nouns. This is something I was really confused when I was back at school, because at school we learn British English. I would read a book and I would see police are trying to do this, this and that. And then in another resource, I would see police is doing something. And I would always ask my teacher, so is police singular or plural? Do I refer to police as an entity or as a group of people? Turns out in Great Britain, you can do both. You can say parliament are, police are, the team are playing tonight. In America, you won't do it. In America, team, police, or whatever you have there is an entity and it's always singular. The team is playing tonight. Police is defunded or whatever. So it's always singular and we use is. Manchester City have called. And here comes the reality police. The next difference is have versus take. We can take a shower, take a nap, take a break. So in Great Britain, you can use both have and take. You can have a vacation, take a vacation, have a break, take a break. Have a shower, take a shower. In America, you can only use take. Let's take a break, let's take a shower, let's take a vacation. 
You never, well, you can't say have, again, people would understand you. But if you're trying to be very correct grammatically, you're taking your TOEFL test and you're like, I'm only sticking to American version of English, then stick to American version of English and only use take with those actions. The next difference is actually really interesting. I always use should, and this is an auxiliary verb. Auxiliary verbs help us understand the exact meaning of a verb that we have in the sentence. They kind of help us deliver our thoughts with the exact meaning. So for example, when I'm posting a story on Instagram and I would say to someone, should we go hang out? outside some of you would dm me dm means direct message me and say marina but nobody uses the word should it's really old oh, you young people you are so old-fashioned and this is when i know that those people learned british english because in great britain you would say shall we go to a birthday party in america i would say should so should is still used in the u.s but in great britain people say shall should we Shall. Also, a lot of British people would say, I shall go home now. In America would say, I will go home now. Will is this intention and shall is the same, this intention, but in British English. When Americans want to express lack of obligation, they would use a helping verb. They would say, you do not need to come to work tomorrow. In Great Britain, they would just drop it and they would say, you needn't come to work tomorrow. And the last but not the least, remember I told you that Americans just love to simplify things? That refers to spelling as well. I'm pretty sure you all noticed it, but color in Great Britain has this extra U. In America, it's just color without a U. Same goes for flavor, favor, favorite, and neighbor. Americans just drop that U. Again, it's up to you which version you want to use, but just be consistent. So if you wrote color with a U, then please write flavor with a U as well. And another difference is in words like organize, emphasize, realize. In America, we would use Z in the end, I-Z-E. In Great Britain, it would be I-S-E. That's the whole difference. That was it from me guys for today. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you enjoyed the content, I will see you very soon in my next videos. Bye-bye.